On January 6, 1995, two thieves broke into a bank in Pittsburgh in the United States. The robbery took place in broad daylight, but the criminals did not use masks or any kind of disguise. Instead, to avoid being identified by the security cameras, they bet on a very unusual technique. The two criminals rubbed lemonade on their faces. That's it. That's literally it. They rubbed lemon juice on their faces, believing that this would make it impossible to identify their image on the bank's internal circuit. This is because in the past, lemon was used as a kind of invisible ink in handwritten letters. And then one of the robbers had this brilliant idea. He tested it using a Polaroid camera and he couldn't see himself. But this probably happened because the camera was defective or because he pointed the lens in the wrong direction. It turns out that the robbers were so confident in their own intelligence that they didn't even suspect that their brilliant idea could go wrong. But obviously, it did go wrong. They were arrested shortly after, but their stupidity was not in vain. In the end, the case served to catch the attention of the social psychology professor from Cornell University in the United States, David Dunning. Upon reading a news article about this robbery, Dunning realized that the criminals were not only stupid for robbing a bank in that manner, but also stupid enough to be unaware of their own stupidity. In other words, he had an epiphany and realized that when a person is very ignorant, they are ignorant even of the fact that they are ignorant. And from this insight, Professor David Dunning invited his student Justin Kruger to conduct a joint research. Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. The idea was to understand to what extent a person's lack of intelligence prevents them from discovering that they are dumb. And the study, published in 1999, reached the following conclusion. When people are incompetent in the strategies they adopt to achieve success, they suffer a dual burden. Not only do they reach erroneous conclusions and make unfortunate choices, but their incompetence robs them of the ability to realize it. They are left with the mistaken impression that they are doing the right thing. And in honor of the two researchers, this phenomenon was named the Dunning-Kruger effect, which you have probably heard of. And in summary, the idea of this effect is that stupidity ends up blinding stupid people to the point where they believe they are intelligent. More than a century before this effect was described, the biologist Charles Darwin had already written a phrase translating this idea well. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. And that's exactly how it is. There is even a graph that helps us understand how this effect impacts our learning. I want you to look at this graph that explains how the Dunning-Kruger effect works. The horizontal axis represents how much we actually know about a particular subject. The vertical axis, on the other hand, represents our confidence, or how much we think we know about a particular subject. I want you to notice that at the beginning, we know nothing. And that's why our perception is exactly that, that we have no idea about that subject. But as soon as we start learning something, we quickly get the perception that now we already understand everything about that topic. In an extremely quick way, it seems like our brain goes puff and we think, now I am a genius, I already understand how this works, until we start delving deeper and deeper into a particular subject. Then we start to realize that maybe things are a bit more complicated than we initially thought. And then our confidence collapses. We start to feel truly ignorant, but it's because now our mind is actually expanding. We are starting to see that things are much more complex than they seemed at first. It reaches a point where we feel completely ignorant with the impression that we know nothing about a subject. It is the moment when our only certainty becomes our own ignorance. It is the phase of I know that I know nothing. By the way, do you know who said that phrase? I don't know either. It is often attributed to the philosopher Socrates, but there is not much certainty about that because it is not found directly in any ancient Greek text. But anyway, be that as it may, this is the turning point. And this is where many people give up when trying to learn about a particular subject. The perception of our own ignorance can make us want to give up, but it is necessary to keep striving, to keep studying. After all, the continuous pursuit of knowledge is what finally sets things right. As we keep studying, our knowledge continues to grow, but now in a constant and natural way. Notice that the line starts to rise again on the graph, but in a smoother way, indicating that our confidence is growing proportionally to the knowledge that is being acquired. And this is where everything starts to make sense again. 
and we truly learn. To prove the existence of this effect, researchers conducted a series of tests. In one of them, a group of volunteers answered a series of questions about logic and grammar. Then, the researchers asked them to evaluate their own performance. And the result drew attention. The respondents who answered more questions correctly underestimated their own performance. Meanwhile, those who got more questions wrong believed they had done exceptionally well. The researchers then repeated the tests in different contexts. Experiments were conducted with athletes, chess players, and even comedians. And generally speaking, the result was always the same. The worse a person's performance in a task, the higher their self-esteem. Do you want a very practical example of this in your daily life? If you have a driver's license, tell me this. Do you consider yourself a good driver? An American study showed that 80% of people believe they have above-average driving skills. And this obviously doesn't add up. There's clearly no way 8 out of 10 people can be above average. There are a lot of bad drivers thinking they're F1 drivers out there. And that explains a lot. And that is why the Dunning-Kruger effect can reveal a real danger in everyday life. And to understand this, let's go back to that graph. And it is at that highest point that a newly licensed motorcycle rider, for example, might think they can perform extremely risky maneuvers. Or that a newly graduated doctor might make a mistake during surgery. Or that an inexperienced investor might think they understand everything in the financial market and lose a fortune on a poorly calculated choice. And it is also by eternally living at this point on the graph that many people read a few texts in messaging apps and already consider themselves experts in extremely technical subjects such as vaccination. Or someone who believes that the earth is flat swears they can prove their theories using, I don't know, a ruler and a glass of water. It's always the strangest things. These are people who are swayed by their own self-esteem and believe that their still superficial knowledge is already enough to understand everything about extremely complex subjects. Therefore, when someone is at this point on the learning curve, it is important to understand one thing. Even a fool is a potential genius, but they need to recognize their own ignorance and seek true understanding of the subjects. This is what differentiates those who live in the comfort zone of ignorance from those who dare to challenge themselves in search of a real understanding about the world around us. And by doing so, we move forward on the graph. Then, it becomes necessary to be careful with its lowest point, when our confidence is at its lowest. We also can't get stuck at this point thinking that we are not capable of understanding anything. This is exactly where the famous imposter syndrome lies. It's that idea of self-sabotage that makes us think we are not prepared for any challenge, that everyone else is smarter, and that it's better to give up certain opportunities and even renounce a promising career because we don't believe in our own potential. Look at me. Stop that. You were born to win. I believe in you. And I need to say that I have been through this myself not too long ago. Everyone is subject to being in this cycle at some point in their life. And when we overcome this phase, then our knowledge and confidence truly start to go hand in hand. And that is wonderful, but we still need to take some precautions. When we come to know a lot about a particular subject, that knowledge becomes extremely natural. We don't even realize that something can be complex for other people. But it's important to keep in mind that not everyone around us has the same level of understanding about everything. That is why it is very common for people with above average intelligence to have difficulty communicating. They do not make themselves understood because they do not realize that most people are a few steps below on the learning scale. And this difficulty in expressing themselves is not the only problem that affects those who are very intelligent. Gifted individuals often do not have access to schools or universities that match their level. And as a result, they end up not developing their own talent due to a lack of structure. Others suffer bullying and end up being excluded from groups of friends. And often they still carry a heavy burden because of the expectations of other people, who place enormous and constant pressure on their shoulders to know everything all the time. And as a consequence of all this, highly intelligent individuals are more likely to develop psychological disorders, such as mood disorders, attention deficit, and anxiety crises. A study conducted with members of American Mensa, a society uniting people with the highest IQs in the United States, showed that these problems are 200% more frequent among members of this club of geniuses. And this might seem like a discouragement to the pursuit of knowledge, making many people think that ignorance is bliss. But that is not the case. Intelligence brings many other advantages. Having knowledge allows us to make better decisions in life. It ensures better judgment of the situations that come our way. It helps us adapt better to difficulties. And it makes us much more interesting people to be around. There's nothing better than talking to someone who expands our horizons and lifts us up. 
even if it is not in our field. In fact, it's even better if it isn't. That's why it's important to always seek more culture and learning. But always keep in mind that no one needs to understand everything all the time. It is essential to accept that the world is complex, much more complex than we are capable of expressing. And this is not just a way of expressing myself. Humans truly do not have the ability to write down their own knowledge about the reality in which they live. And this realization even has a name. It is the Polanyi Paradox. The name refers to the Hungarian-British philosopher Michael Polanyi, who created this theory in the 1960s. And, in a simplified manner, the idea of this paradox is that we know more than we are able to say. This means that there is indeed a portion of our knowledge that is essentially tacit. In other words, it cannot be expressed in words. It's like when a teacher asked a question at school and you said, I know what it is, but I can't explain it. Congratulations, you were a child, and you were already perfectly summarizing the Polanyi paradox. From an idea that seems to come out of nowhere to the choice of a move in chess, our mind doesn't always fit into our words. But how is it possible that humans are not able to define what they themselves have created? In other words, how can a world developed by us not fit into our own understanding? One of the main reasons humanity has reached this point is that nowadays basically all our knowledge is collective. Our relationships are of total interdependence. Globalization has made people and entire countries dependent on each other. Everything is connected. No human being is an island. No country is an island. Okay, some are, but you get the idea. What I mean is that the world only works within this web that we ourselves have developed, and it has become impossible to dissociate from this chain that connects all of us. In other words, no one knows how to make a pencil. This idea originated from the economist Leonard Reed. He says that no person in the world is capable of making a pencil alone. The production of an object so common in our daily lives requires a series of resources and knowledge that go beyond the reach of even the most intelligent and well-prepared person. From planting the tree to cutting down the wood, from extracting the ore to the precise cutting of the graphite, everything nowadays depends on someone else. And this becomes even more evident when we think about more complex technologies. If no one knows how to make a pencil, imagine how a single person would be able to assemble a computer or build an airplane from scratch. And all of this makes the organization and understanding of our own world completely beyond our reach. And this realization is not just a mere curiosity. Ultimately, the Polanyi paradox may be the greatest enemy to the development of artificial intelligence. After all, how can we teach a machine to do something that we don't know how to teach, only how to do? For example, programming a computer to perform subjective or creative activities that we ourselves cannot decipher. Why does a musician compose a particular piece using one chord and not another? Why does a poet write a verse using one word and not another that also rhymes? Why does an artist paint a picture using one color and not another? If one day we are able to decipher all the infinite decisions that our mind makes at every moment, perhaps we will also be able to transfer all our knowledge to the electronic brain. But while that doesn't happen, and it is likely that it never will, will our limitations as human beings hinder the advancement of technology? Will our natural ignorance be the great obstacle to artificial intelligence? These are difficult questions precisely because the world is truly beyond our comprehension. And if we don't know the answers to them, it's not a problem. After all, remember the Dunning-Kruger effect? Those who think they know everything tend to be intoxicated by their own ignorance. Recognizing that we don't know is the first sign that we are, in fact, on the path to learning. And for that reason, let's continue learning all our lives, every day. Thank you very much and see you next time.